fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. Happy, happy late Easter, and welcome back, fashion besties, both new and old. So grateful you have tuned in this week, whether you're driving, you're walking, you're exercising, you're working out, or you might be lying down right now just trying to gather your thoughts or taking a nap. Not mad at you for that. We've been in New York for the past few days getting our apartment together because we moved apartments. And speaking of new apartments, I just happened to be walking down the street at our new apartment with Schmutz and somebody recognized me from our building and she said that she listens and follows me. Um, was totally grateful to meet her. So shout out to Kim from our new building. And thank you so much for listening and being part of the Fashion Bestie crew. Love that. Hope you're listening right now. Love it so much when I give a shout out and then I hear people email me or they call me or they DM me and they thank me for the shout out. That makes me so happy. If I say I'm giving you a shout out, make sure you listen so you can hear your name. Anyway. Easter was just last Sunday, so I hope all of you who celebrated had a wonderful holiday and everyone felt like they looked gorgeous and put together and better than any other past Easter. Even though I don't personally celebrate Easter, I understand it's a very big deal and you want to look really nice. And it's definitely a cause for celebration, especially for you, because you actually made it to another Easter and you look good. How about that? I had a few people ask me for my opinion on dresses that they liked, and this has sparked a potential fashion crime that I did not want you guys to make. So I spotted it when someone sent me a picture of themselves in a dress that they were already wearing and they wanted to show me. It wasn't a dress. Sorry, it was a skirt. We'll get into that in just a moment after I guilt you guys into buying my book. Did you know that over 50% of Americans on the daily make fashion mistakes that they don't even realize that they're making, lack of body awareness, and fashion, air quotes, life skills is what I like to call them, can actually hold you back in life from getting that new job or taking that next step or really just even subconsciously, this can chip away at your self-esteem every single time you get dressed until finally one day you just can't get out of your so-called funk. So what are fashion life skills? These are skills that some people have never been taught, like how to wear clothing that fits your body, wearing the correct undergarments, or proper care and maintenance of your wardrobe. These, my friends, can make or break your self-image and slash or program you to get what I like to call stuck in a style rut. Lucky for you, Stop Making These Fashion Mistakes is right there to help prevent you from making these mistakes. Published by me, made possible by Amy, my marketing queen, who did the layout. And damn, I know she's sorry she suggested that I write that book. But anyway, we did it. So please, if you would like to make sure you're not making these fashion mistakes, jump on over to Amazon and type in Stop Making These Fashion Mistakes. And if you've already bought the book, please leave us a review on Amazon as that's like gold in the publishing world. It's all about the algorithms, which is totally annoying, but we all have to succumb to the algorithms. Bottom line, I would be super grateful. And even if you don't need it, I bet you know someone who does. Let's be honest. Stop making these fashion mistakes by me, Holly Cates, The only Holly you need to know. Get your copy today. I had someone write in to me last week and she said, this is what I wore to work today. And instead of correcting her, I thanked her for the picture and I'd like to address what could have been improved on her look. 
And then I realized how common this mistake is. So I wanted y'all to know, so you're not making the same mistake. Okay, so she had on a skirt, a top, and a jacket with boots. Solid jacket and a top with a floral skirt. The problem, everything was too long. So let's start with the shirt. In this case, it was a t-shirt. If you're wearing a t-shirt under a jacket, which is allowed, by the way, you must create a waist, which means you need to tuck in your shirt. Yes, you do. When you wear a t-shirt and it's hanging down to your pelvic bone with a jacket that's past your butt, that is a fashion crime. If you carry your weight around your middle, or even if you don't, you must tuck in your shirt. This is a non nagosh That's what creates your waist. Then a belt would be helpful. Now, this is not a requirement, but it would be helpful. And I know you think that tucking in your shirt brings attention to your stomach. And this is why I want to address this. What you see in the mirror, okay, let's keep it real. What you see in the mirror is a bit different than what people see when looking at you straight on. Whatever you think your problem area is, let's just say in this case, that's your stomach. That's all you're going to see anyway. It really doesn't matter what you put on, good or bad. That is what you're going to focus on. And if I don't know you and I'm looking at you and I see that you're wearing a shirt that's too long because you're trying to cover your stomach, then that's what it looks like. It looks like you're trying to hide your middle. All you're doing is bringing more attention to it when you're trying to cover it. Now, on the flip, if you tuck in your shirt and I see, oh, you have a waist, you're not trying to hide. I see that you have nice curves. It makes sense that you've tucked in your shirt. When you don't tuck in your shirt, it looks like you're boxy and you have no waist. But when you tuck in your shirt, even if you have a little bit of a stomach, all I see is that you have small waist. So here is a blazer disclaimer that I would like to point out. If you're wearing an oversized blazer that's a little long, then that's the look you're going for. I get it. But when you're wearing a blazer that's too big because you think it's going to make you look smaller, that is a fashion crime. Make sure your jackets, please, please fit and they come a little past your waist, say to the top of your waistband. You have way too much fabric if you're wearing a blazer that's too long and too big. P.S., the oversized blazer does not look great on just anybody, okay? Your best bet is to wear a jacket that fits. Now, you can roll up the sleeves if they're too long, but if the length is too long, it makes you look boxy and like you have no curves. So the idea is to make you look proportionate without too much fabric on the top or the bottom. So. On this person, her shirt was not tucked in, her blazer was oversized, and it was too long. Now, let's talk about her skirt. It was a floral print skirt, which was very pretty, but again, the skirt was too long. So when it comes to skirt and dress lengths, the only lengths that we need to worry about for our specific age group include but are not limited to the following. A mini skirt or dress. Mini skirt, that is above your knee. That doesn't mean it's halfway up your thigh. It just means that's above the knee. Knee length, which is right under your kneecap, okay? That is a knee length dress or skirt. A midi, M-I-D-I, midi, that is halfway in between your the top of your ankle bone and the bottom of your knee. That is a midi length. Now, a T length is right above or touching the ankle. And the floor length is all the way to the floor and it covers the top of your shoe, but it doesn't drag on the ground. So needless to say, her skirt was too long as a, she is what I like to call vertically challenged. I mean, I'm short. I call myself short, vertically challenged, whatever. With the skirt brought up to a midi or a knee length, her shirt tucked in with a belt and the jacket much shorter, that's an instant facelift and it could have taken 10 years off, okay? Solid effort for real, but in actuality, this outfit really just needed some minor alterations. And speaking of alterations, have you found your designated alterations person yet? It sure is a game changer when trying to find clothes that fit you. So make sure you have someone in mind that can help you out the next time you shop. You can look it up 
If you live in a small town, go to the cleaners because they do minor alterations as well. What's the takeaway here? Tuck in your shirt, get your jackets shortened, and bring up the length of those skirts and dresses. If you choose not to wear a shorter jacket, I understand, but get this, okay? They should not reach past the top of your very top of your hip bone. If you go to the top of your thigh, which is where your hip crease is, and you go up to the top of your hip bone, that's the top. The length of your jacket should not reach past the top of your hip bone. And Your jackets should definitely not go past your butt. Should not. So for any new fashion besties, welcome, welcome. I have previously reported on the 2024 spring trends, which was episode 184, New York Fashion Week and Trend Report, with the help of going to the shows, trend research, and the FGI communique. Shout out to the Fashion Group International. I picked the trends for spring that I wanted you to know about that I thought that were most important for you to know. If you haven't listened to that, please go back and do so. In addition to my trend report for spring, that's all anyone is discussing online and in print. What celebrities are wearing, which trends, where they're wearing them, how they're wearing them, who's wearing what trend, so forth, so on, and what have you. With that being said, here's an additional group of trends that I want you to know about that I'm going to be trying, styling, and working into my own wardrobe. These are all over the fashion news at the moment. So, you know, see what works for you and let me know what you like or what you're really not feeling. The first trend is bright, bright colors. Bright colors, every color of the rainbow. Some say including neon, some don't. Just depends what you want to wear. They have been around for the past few seasons and really haven't gone anywhere. It's died down a little However, I'm still seeing the bright color, bright yellow, bright green, you know, the reds, the blues. And even though the color of the year is peach fuzz, according to Pantone, that's episode 176. If you haven't listened to that, so please go back and listen to that. If you haven't, so you can learn all about the color of the year and why it matters. There are other colors that have shot up to the top of the, quote, must-have list including but not limited to oxblood, which is really just like it sounds. It's a very deep red, almost a burgundy. Some people call it black cherry, bright white, and ice blue. So white is back. It never really left, but it's for sure of utmost importance right now, especially with white dresses and blouses. White is really on trend. So let's talk about how to wear white. How do you wear white? I'm so glad you asked. Wearing white requires two things. You not to be a slob, which is actually not easy for me. Seriously, I would never wear white to a restaurant. Ever. Like, never, ever. I cannot be trusted. And number two, you have to make sure the fabric is not see-through unless it's meant to be, like, sheer. Now, my rule of thumb is that I will wear a white skirt as long as the fabric is thick and structured, but will not under any circumstances wear white pants. I just don't feel comfortable in them, and I haven't been able to find a white pant that isn't see-through or that doesn't show all of my problem areas on the back of my thighs. Even white denim. I have not found a pair of jeans that I prefer, so some people can do it, and it looks great, but for me specifically, it has to be a dress or a skirt for me to wear white on the bottom. Now, I do love a white bag. I love a white shoe. I love painting my nails white. I also have a white leather jacket that I love, so I'm all over the white trend. Be careful if you do wear white on the bottom. You have to be extra careful, or especially I do for the most part. When I had white jeans a while back, I sat in something that I couldn't get out, and who knows where you're sitting or what's on the seat. It's just I have not had luck with white pants. Now, this oxblood color is really fabulous, and I had no idea it was like top of the color trends at the moment. I just got a Chanel bag from Madison and Fifth in Savannah. That's oxblood. I can totally see it in anything from denim to boots or especially even shorts for the summer. Lucky for you, all of these trends will be on my Pinterest board for the week, so you can see what I'm talking about. You can call it Like I said before, black cherry or maroon, 
but the darker, deeper the color of red, the better. I will for sure be trying this one out. So as far as the ice blue is concerned, I do have to say I love this in accessories. Definitely use it as a neutral. I would. I love the idea of it and think it could be so beautiful in a full dress, a peasant blouse, or skirt, or ooh, some cowboy boots and ice blue. Those would be my personal choices or a bag for sure. It's a tougher color to pull off for most, but the oxblood for sure, dead ringer, that's a definite for me. And just to be clear, ice blue is not light blue. It is the palest of the lightest blues. It's not like a baby blue or anything like that. Also, don't forget about the shades. I did until I saw them. Ray-Ban has some awesome shades that I put on my Pinterest board that are light blue, ice blue. Sorry, not light blue. They're ice blue. Along with some trench coats. Trench coats in ice blue. Yes, please. And some fabulous boots. And speaking of boots, the Western trend is on fire right now. And it's really cross-culturally spreading to all the people who are being introduced to it for the first time. Now, We could go on a limb here and give all the credit to Beyonce with her new Western turn into the backwoods of country music. However, however, Western clothing, it's really never, ever out of style. Everything, everything Western is in. Boots, jackets, belts, bolo ties, leather, and every kind of denim you can think of. And when it comes to pulling off this trend, less is always more. Having a great statement boot, it just might be all you need. I just got some great boots for my 50th birthday a few months back by Tacova. We have a Tacova store here in Atlanta. And just know that they really are an investment. If you're thinking about getting cowboy boots, but you're not sure, rest assured, they are evergreen and will never go out of style. And you can wear them year round. So how about that? Please note, You can get real cowboy boots, like authentic boots, or you can get cowboy style boots, like cowboy boots with similar construction, but they're made typically with less expensive materials. Or you can get authentic cowboy boots from brands like Dingo, Tacova, Justin, Ariat, Tony Lama, or Stetson. You can wear cowboy boots, like I said before, year round, spring, summer, fall, winter, what have you. And I Definitely non negotiable not up for discussion, 1,000%, you have to get them in person. Yes, you do. You must try them on. And again, they last a lifetime. Now, I have my cowboy boots. I have some in black that are shorter, and I have my Tacovas, which are brown, and they go, you know, right below my knee. I would like some white cowboy boots, and I would like some higher black cowboy boots. So I'm putting that. Oh, and I do want some silver cowboy boots. Now I got some other silver boots by All Saints because they were on sale. They're like slouchy, you know, like two inch heel boots. But I do want some silver cowboy boots. So I am putting that into the universe and let it be so. Ballet flats are back, especially for spring. Now, I would have never thought that I would be into ballet flats because I'm not. But I just purchased some mesh flats from a company called Dear Francis that I've never heard from before. I had never heard of Dear Francis, but I did think they were so different and really cool. So I went ahead and said, ding, add to cart. Know that loafers, those are considered flats as well. I think our flats are great, but they haven't been my style for a while, but they are everywhere. Mary Jane's, the strappy ones, one strap or two strap. The patent leather ones are really in right now, especially silver and metallics. They have all come back. If that's your jam, I suggest a flat with a wider leg pant instead of a skinny pant. That's what I do suggest. I do, in fact, love the Mary Jane's. They come in all price points from designer to Myra. And that's what's great about shoe trends. They always come super low to very high. The next trend I want you to know about is interesting trench coats. Now, notice I said interesting. If you have not invested in a trench, by this time, we could get divorced, but I'm not going to divorce you because some people are new to the Fashion Crimes podcast 
but I have screamed this from the mountaintops. You must get a trench coat. It is now. The time is now. Okay. Looking at trench coats can be confusing if you don't know what to get. But we spoke about this before when I gave my how to buy a winter coat episode way back in the day. And when I mean trench, I mean a lightweight trench for spring. I do not mean a heavy winter trench coat. This is the trench coat I'm talking about, a lightweight one. Now, it can be rain resistant or waterproof. That is a good fabric quality to look for. However, you don't have to get that. They usually come in neutrals like khaki or tan or beige or even black. This is something that is evergreen as well, will never go out of style, and is chic and absolutely effortless. Trench coats are great for everything, but they're really great with a dress or especially jeans. And what I mean by an interesting trench is one that has embroidery. It can be a super fun color. It can be a pattern or a print. Or I saw a trench coat that only went to the waist. Is it still a trench? Yes, it was a trench style coat. But a real trench will go, you know, halfway down your thigh, maybe even to your knee if you prefer. But I thought that was super interesting. That went only to the waist, this specific coat. Again, some great examples will be, in fact, on your Pinterest board for this week. So how much should you spend on a trench coat? So let's think about the CPW, which is the cost per wear. If you buy a trench coat and let's say you keep it for 15 years then I would not spend less than $300 on a trench coat. The best time to buy any kind of coat, of course, is off season. So since it's trench weather right now, the best time to buy a coat, especially a trench coat, would be right before the start of the holiday season because people are buying winter coats then and trench coats are usually not are what's selling right before holiday. So the top of the food chain is Burberry, of course, which they pretty much started the trench coat back way back when. But every other designer has a trench coat as well. You don't have to get a specifically high-end designer trench coat, as most designers do make them, but get the best you can afford. My trench coat is made by a company called Anuki, which I think was definitely in the $400, $500 range And it's all silver sequins on the inside, and it is reversible. Of course, it's sequin on the inside. Duh, have you met me? I love it, and I always get some really good reactions when I flash it and wear it, because I always like act like a flasher, and I'm flashing the sequins, and people are like, oh my God. So that's what I do when I wear my coat. So if you need help, let me know if you do. But I would definitely put that on my Mother's Day want list for gifts. If you haven't started a list of what you want for Mother's Day, that would be a fantastic start. That's my opinion. Shout out to Kristen this week for writing in. She was telling me that she was loving a menopause and style episode. So thank you to Kristen for listening and make sure you tell all of your friends to listen to. Also shout out to Kimberly. She was really feeling the things in your wardrobe that might be holding you back episode. So thank you to Kimberly. But that's all for this week, my fashion besties. That's it. That's all I got. I truly hope this episode gave you some insight on some additional trends that you can look out for and try for yourself. Don't forget to hit up the Pinterest board again and repin. Don't just look at it. Repin the stuff that you like to your own board because that spreads the word about us here at the Fashion Crafts Podcast headquarters. And you know how much we love that. Please follow and engage with us and keep the questions coming. The quickest way to get to me is actually to send me a DM on the Fashion Crimes Podcast Instagram, which will certainly give you the quickest answer to your style inquiries. I'm so, so happy that spring is here. And you know what? To load you up with even more, it's going to be bathing suit season soon. So stay tuned for my favorite bathing suit picks this season coming up. Sending all the style, love, and light your way in addition to hoping you have the most incredible fashion karma you can receive for you and your fashion besties so see y'all next week my name is holly cates your favorite personal stylist and again the only holly you need to know y'all have a fabulous fabulous fashionable week talk to you later bye